What is up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Side Hustle Experiment podcast. Today, we got our friend Oscar Martinez on the channel. I've known Oscar for, I don't know, almost three or four years now. We met on Instagram. He um, was a seven-figure Amazon wholesaler. He's kind of scaled back his business a little bit. So we're going to get into that and kind of what he's up to now and just do the general Amazon talk. So thanks for being here, man. Yeah, man. I appreciate you for having me on. I definitely listen to this podcast. You know, when it comes to most of the Amazon podcasts, this is probably one of the only ones I actually still listen to. Uh, because it, I kind of like the vibe you guys have with just kind of chilling and just, you know, having a talk, uh, normal conversation versus just uh, how do you get started? How do you do this? How do you source? You know, versus that type of like style. So, yeah. So, you know, definitely grateful to be on this one for sure. Yeah, we appreciate, appreciate that. that. We'll That's Venmo you later for that. <laughs> go ahead, John. What was it? Sorry. I said we'll Venmo him later for saying that. <laughs> yeah, that's Venmo. <laughs> Paid sponsorship. Our whole goal for doing this was like, I would like to do something that was, you know, more conversational. Because you always, I think you just see these people online, like these gurus and stuff like that. And you're like, yeah. how are they, how do they really, without like trying to sell you stuff and things like that, or trying to like teach you something. I just want to know like how people are and how they think about stuff. If you yeah. can like learn how people think, it can get you really far. So yeah. I'm glad that you like the style. Yeah. I like the way you guys like, you, you know, you keep it just, uh, aside from Amazon, you guys go a little bit more in depth, like a the way someone thinks kind of like like that mentality right instead of just the basic amazon questions yep well starting with a little basic amazon question is <laughs> so, he, john was john was telling me you've scaled back a bit so like what what's your uh, thought process there i watched uh, one of your recent youtube videos so i'm like man everybody's kind of coming to the same conclusion but you can put it yeah. down for it. no yeah i'm noticing that too i'm seeing a lot of sellers who are just scaling back a lot of them won't come out about it but uh, I, I don't mind about it, you know, because at the end of the day, it's my life. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, a, like I said on that one video that I did drop. So every beginning of the year, I always like to reflect back on, you know, how the business did the year previously. Uh, and that's every single year, you know, not just this year, but like last year, the year before, like last year when we, when I was like trying to restructure the business, I wanted to get out of OA and get more into wholesale. And that's what I ended up doing last year. Uh, and this year too, uh, I, I wanted to step back because, you know, I had like an issue back in Q4 of last year where I spent like 20000 on one particular ASIN because uh, it was moving so fast. So I was just buying from my supplier week after week. But it was that it was that issue right there, that, that little obstacle that kind of had me thinking more like, you know, this was just an expiration date issue that a customer filed a complaint against us. So Amazon wasn't you know, took the listing down from us for a bit because we had to prove that it wasn't expired and all this crap. But that that issue also had me thinking like, damn, that was just, you know, one listing, you know, what would have happened if that was my entire business model too, you know? Uh, and yeah, so at the beginning of the year, I was just like, man, I got like, here's one thing that people don't know about me because I really don't talk about it, but I have six kids and a wife. So I got a big family. <laughs> <laughs> so to me, I'm like, if that was my entire business, I couldn't live with myself like that, just relying on solely Amazon, knowing I have this much of a family, right? And so to me, I was like, yeah, I kind of need to, kind of want to step back, pivot into some other stuff. That way, something ever does happen, then I kind of have something more to fall back on. Maybe I've built it up already by that certain point, and then FBA would just kind of be a side thing at that point. But yeah, it was just that obstacle right there that really had me thinking twice about really wanting to scale this business model further and further because to go more further means taking out more credit, more loans. And me with such a big family, I'm not willing to take that big of a risk and have all that depth on me should something ever happen. So that's my main point on that. No, I think it makes a ton of sense. Yeah. I mean, it's it's funny. I think a lot of people come to that. And I'm only 26 years old, about to turn 26, but like, I feel like I have the, the same mindset of like, well, I'm not going to throw away everything I've done, like right. out of my control. When it's like, you see these 19 year old, 20 year old dudes, like who gives a fuck, man, like go for it. It's like, dude, <laughs> like I get it. I, I was like that too, but eventually you got to look back and think, okay, I'm not really building anything here. I'm just having yeah. this like cash flow thing and how much cash flow is it even generated? Cause I have to put in so much money and I only take out so much and I definitely get where you're coming from. You have a, uh, what, what's your next transition? Are you, are you like looking at anything else? 
Yeah, so recently I've been working on the Amazon Influencer Program. So that's one program that I've been working on for like a few months now, maybe three months max. Uh, also getting more into like the UGC side of that particular model as well. So yeah, just trying different things really at the moment. Are you, uh, do you speak Spanish? I know yeah. that Martinez. Yeah. 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 I'll say one thing, man, the, uh, Spanish TikTok stuff. I, I don't know if you're on that yet or not, but I've heard that shit is killing it. Like yeah. supplements, Spanish supplements. Yeah. And that's like, I mean, I was just talking to John about this yesterday. When there's something that has a barrier to entry, like I can't enter that market. I mean, maybe AI would let me a little bit, but right. like there, I can't like yeah. speak Spanish, you know? So that when you have a barrier to entry like that, you're way better off because with like Amazon, the like big problem with that is anyone can do it at any time. Yeah. You just have to be 18. You don't even have to be 18. You can use yeah. an account. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Have you got, what do you, have you got into that in a little bit? Uh, TikTok? Nah, I haven't really messed with the TikTok part yet. I've just never been a fan of TikTok, but I have heard about like the shop affiliate and all of that stuff. So yeah, I am planning on making an account though, probably by the weekend, honestly, because I'm just, I've been caught up doing like all the AIP stuff and UGC stuff. So goal is to get that set up already too and really start building that up yeah sweet sweet yeah for sure uh what do you like most about kind of like the in amazon influencer program i mean i'm pretty heavy into it yesterday i actually had an amazing day and closed like 400 bucks in brand deals oh, holy shit and i'm actually sitting on this chair this chair is like 300 bucks they sent it to me for free and they're gonna uh, pay me and they're paying 150 dollars for a video on it so yeah. my life is definitely a lot different the day to day now. Um, yeah. So kind of what do you, I don't know. We, we actually talked like three weeks ago for like three hours about this, but like yeah. kind of what kind of things are you looking forward to for AIP versus kind of FBA? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy when you hear about business models where you kind of don't do much, but you also make money on the back end. It's almost impossible to uh, believe it until you actually see it and, you know, do it. And honestly, there's nothing bad I can really say about this program. Like, for number one, there's no overhead. Like, yeah. I pay for, like, one software that's 30 bucks a month versus with, like, mm -hmm. FBA. I was spending, like, close to 2000 a month with, like, VA software, mm -hmm. and employees, all that stuff. Uh, another thing, too, is, like, you put work up front on a few videos and then you really never have to touch those videos again. I'm like, like you just leave it, put it on passive income mode, and you just collect the paycheck, honestly, from that. Uh, also, too, it's just the amount of stress and time that I'm putting into influencer versus, like, FBA is way low compared to FBA. So, like, with FBA, you're almost on a day-to-day -day basis, checking your yellow bars, seeing what's sold, seeing what needs repricing, seeing if you know, your employee needs help. Or just anything like that, right? Whereas with like the influencer UGC side, I check my phone. It's almost like I have to force myself to check my phone to see if there's anything new because there isn't, but I'm still collecting money on there. So it's yeah. more like laid back. Uh, it, it's kind of weird because it frees up so much time that you almost don't know what to do with that extra time now compared to like FBA where it kind of kept you more busy on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And for anyone who doesn't know, it's actually like the opposite. So for the influencer... They don't have orange bars. They have, I think they're green bars, but yeah. there's no app for it. Like, so there is an app. It's tied to your Amazon account, but it only updates once. Yep. So it's usually like, I get up early, but it's usually like six or seven in the morning where mine like tends to update. And then there's no like refresh or refresh. It's just like what you did the prior day. And then that's it so like you don't lose any time like checking all that kind of stuff too but yeah. yeah i mean i feel like that is kind of the biggest thing about it and what i like too what a lot of people don't i don't know i thought it was stupid i also thought of, like selling on amazon was stupid when i first started like it just didn't make any sense to me and like so like aip really didn't make any sense to me because like you just make videos you don't even buy inventory or anything like that yeah. um but yeah, once I did it, and I was like, all right, like this is starting to take off. Um, it's just crazy to me because you're also like, yeah, you can get deplatformed or like if you yeah. share the screenshots and stuff like that. You can. But it's like if you got kicked off, it sucks. But you're not out any money. They don't have your inventory. They have like a thousand, fifteen hundred videos. And yeah, it sucks. You're not getting paid on that. But it's not like you're a hundred grand in debt and try yeah. to get inventory where you don't even know where it is 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, do you have like a schedule you do with videos? Or like how many do you try to do a day? You know, like do you try to make 10, 20, whatever? Yeah, so uh, when we first really wanted to go dive deep into it, we did at least 500 videos in a month, if not probably even a little bit more, which, which is quite a bit. <laughs> like if you know, oh, uh... like if you're in this model, you kind of know how much that is to do in such, you know, short amount of time. But ever since then, uh, and we did that too, because the kids were going back to school. We wanted to take full advantage of the free time that we had. Uh, but now that they're back at school and whatnot, it's a little bit harder. So I try to do at least five videos a day if possible. And so like that, I'm being consistent with that. So I try to do five AIP videos a day, and then at least one UGC video of some products that I have a day as well. So that way I'm just trying to stay consistent with it. What do you mean exactly when you just talk about the UGC stuff, like in comparison to the uh... – the Amazon influencer. Yeah, so Amazon influencer, you make videos of you know products, do reviews, you post them specifically on Amazon, and you get commission you know just from the Amazon platform. Whereas UGC, you're doing the same thing, making you know videos, somewhat of a review. Uh, of a review. You're kind of more being like salesy of like buying a product or checking a product, and then you're like doing these for brands specifically though like it's not just for amazon you reach out to brands like kitchen maid uh colgate or you know just whatever brands are out there and they pay you to do a video you know 300 bucks 250 whatever it may be uh so there's a little bit difference in both oh sweet how much how much do you, can you say how much you're making or i know john says it's like tough to say that right uh with aip yeah yeah so it varies. So uh, my first month I made like five bucks. My second month I made like five hundred. Third month I made like a thousand or so. Then last month I made like thirteen hundred. This month probably around the same. And then I'm hoping on Q4 to kind of make up more for it as far as like with the influencer program. Yeah, and it probably trends the same way as regular Amazon. What do you think for Q4? There's more yeah. volume, right? You guys are gonna get more sales. Well, I'm curious both of your all's thoughts on this. Like, how do, how big do you think realistically that you can scale it to? And I know you can probably get it massive. People on, people say you can make a million dollars a year on Amazon, but no one's doing that shit. So, what well, what's like the what do you think's like the the dream outcome for like how much do you think you can make a month from it? You can go first, John or Oscar, either way. Yeah, you can go, John. So for me, I think if you want the exact spreadsheet i have used to sell over three million dollars on amazon how i track my buys how i track my best sources where i put links to my favorite sites i have a spreadsheet that i've spent the last two three years building if you want access to it it is absolutely free just go to the free resources section down below this video 100 percent free now let's get back to the podcast I don't know. It's hard. I only have eight months worth of data, but I mean, my, my commissions keep going up. They're pretty steady for the most part. I think all the money, the commissions, it's weird. So I feel like this is just Amazon in general. It's like, you can make money on the platform. Obviously we all do it. Right. Um, but the real money is made off the platform, coaching, leads list, software, all that other stuff. And I see AIP, obviously there's an arm of that where there are supposedly like in this, the mom community, there's already a lot of courses, but like in the FBA kind of people space, there's maybe about three courses I'm aware of. I'm sure there'll yep. be more. Um, but I see the biggest arm is going to be brand deals. Like I, like yesterday, $400, like, and one of them is going to be a retainer. They're going to pay every month. They're going to send product. And I'm going to get this every month. I mean, like this chair, for example, like 150 bucks. It took 10 minutes to put together. Like, I actually really like it. It's super comfortable. And then, like, it just got my wheels turning. Um, I'm like, wow, 150 bucks. Like, how many ASINs would you have to find? <laughs> right? Yeah. And, like, you'd have, to, like, and for it to be, per like, this is 150 bucks, no matter what. Right. It's yep. not the price isn't tanking. Like we're not negotiating. Like it's not commission based. Like it's just like, hey, you make this video, we're gonna give you 150 bucks. So I see that to be the biggest thing. Um, and then on top of that, I think I'm looking into like kind of TikTok shop as well. Um I have like three or four hundred products down here that like I've gotten from creator connections. Wow. And 
Yeah. Like, so I'm just like, uh, I'm maybe probably just going to make a TikTok video on each of these and just see what happens and hopefully be able to grow the account. I've heard people say you could spend like a hundred, 150 bucks and it'll get you like the 4,000 followers or whatever you need on there. Uh, so I started the account. I still have to like fill it out and everything, but I don't know. Like it seems like way too crazy, way too good to be true. But for me, I used to work in influencer marketing, like shit, like 10 years ago. And brands were paying huge money then for like stay at home moms to write blog posts. Wow. That was 10 years ago. So, I mean, this has been going on forever. Um, And I just, I don't know. I think the sky's the limit. I mean, again, like you're, you're not as much as Amazon's mercy either. Even if AIP, my AIP got shut down, like. I can still be doing brand deals and post that stuff on TikTok, like my YouTube page, um, a website, like anything else. So I think it's less. And a lot of the supposed to the UGC deals, you just make the videos and send to them. Like they run the ads, they do all the shit. So like you could easily make a ton of money doing that. So I think a lot of the, that's where a lot of the money will come from. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as far as my goal, like with this and everything, I do plan at least making ten thousand a month, minimum at least. Yeah. Eventually doing all this, uh, I think if I can get to that spot, I'll be pretty okay with it. Uh, I know with AIP reaching that twenty, thirty k months like that, it might be pretty long term. I mean, I'm willing to do it, but yeah, at least for for now, if I can get to ten k, I'll be pretty okay with that. Uh, but yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, uh, I was just thinking. I was talking to John about this too. <laughs> I think the, which I don't understand this AIP thing. Maybe I just need to get on this and just because everybody on the pod talks about it. But like my thing was that with the TikTok shop, you can make massive amounts of money really fast. So like if you make a viral video, you can make literally like 50K in a week, 50K in a week and a half or whatever, which is like from my understanding, not really replicable the same way with Amazon influencer or a brand deal, you know, unless you get big enough to where a brand will pay you 50K, which people do that, but that's like big ass influencers. But I think that's where like the big opportunity is like once you're, you know, you got it on autopilot, you have your brand deals coming in. If you can figure out how to make the viral content, like you can kind of make your yearly salary on two videos. You know, you go viral 15 million views, you drive all this traffic for a brand. Now you're rocking. And I don't know if you guys have seen this or not either, but these brands are coming out with like incentives where if you drive 50 K in revenue to the brand, they'll buy you a MacBook or hundred K they'll buy you whatever. And then it's like, if you drive over a million bucks, they'll, buy you a cyber truck or give you like a 50 grand cash thing. Yeah. Like crazy stuff like that. If you, if you start getting in the TikTok shop on Twitter, you'll see it. Like I yeah. saw a kid the other day, he made 75 grand last month from just commissions on TikTok shop. I, like, I, mean, I, I see that stuff, but I, I just don't know if it's like true or not. Cause I'm not like in that TikTok, you know, community. So I'm just like, maybe they're lying or something, but it's hard to tell, honestly. But, yeah. With the, Definitely, I could see some people blowing, like, you know, blowing smoke up your ass about it. But I think that a lot of these guys, like, are pretty transparent. It's it's way – it's like storefront stalking. You can kind of go see, you know, the videos they're making. Like, it's not like they're super anonymous. So you can kind of see, like, oh, he did get 12 million views. Like, yeah, it's going to drive some revenue. That's like a shitload of views, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to check that out. Then. <laughs> Holy yeah, crap. Man, I mean, I'm telling you that that would be – it's a huge opportunity, especially with the Spanish stuff. Like, that that is on the massive come up. And I, think, yeah. I don't think people understand this either that like Mexico and Spain, those aren't like bad countries. They have credit. They have like people have money there. So like I think people just look at like if you're not in the U S it's just not a great country. It's like, that's not how it works. Like these countries <laughs> spend loads of money, like millions and millions of dollars on TikTok. So that's a great opportunity. I've been trying to get John into it. Like not the Spanish part, but just to the U S. Yeah. yeah. Cause I just what? think it'd be cool if he comes on and makes 50 K in a day, come to tell someone. <laughs> what? Why don't you John? I'm well, I set up so I set up the TikTok account. I don't so a lot of people were have been saying to buy the account, but I've heard a lot of people have issues like yeah. down the line when they buy the account. So I don't want to do that. So I just have to do it. Like I'm willing to put the ad spend behind it just to kind of what do you need? Like four thousand, I think. Yeah, five that or something like that. Yeah. Five um, and that's what I have like all this inventory down here. And I'm like, I need to like get this on Facebook Marketplace like ASAP because I'm running out of room. Which sounds insane, but like I am. Um, and so I was like, I should just make a TikTok video because what I've heard is too is like you can't use the same video that you post on Amazon on TikTok. Right. I don't know yeah. why. 
but probably because they're integrating or they they have plans to do that anyway. So for the stuff that's like not that hard to do, like I have a whole tub of like vitamins and supplements that like I don't know. I try in the video. I try to do a better job instead of like actually open it, like show the pill and like all that other stuff. And it's like not stuff I'm gonna take, but I feel like I just do videos for that and test it out and see. I've seen like some success on YouTube too. Like I did a review for like a television. I got like six thousand views. That's insane. I don't even have a six thousand view video on this channel. Like uh, it's insane. Yeah. And like this it's just like so crazy. So to me, it just opened my eyes to be like, wow, like, you know, you know, how many people want to learn to sell on Amazon versus like want to buy a TV? It's so much bigger. And I'm like, yeah. damn, like this is absolutely insane. Yep. Yeah, I, I feel you because I got my YouTube for like the program too. And I had one of my son's toys on their simple, like one minute video. That thing got like 50,000 views out of damn. nowhere. <laughs> that was holy, like, holy shit. crap. Do you guys link your products in there? I think I see that all the yeah. time where it's like you can yeah. link the Amazon. Okay. And do you drive any sales like that? Have you noticed? Very little. Hardly. I made, like, I made like five bucks so far. Yeah. It's a yeah, different think, program though. You because you have to put your associate link. Yeah. Associate yeah. like pays hardly anything. I see. Yeah, I think with the TikTok stuff, it's like uh, from my understanding. It's like you you spend maybe like twelve hours in a day making a really good video because you're editing the whole thing. You're trying to make it perfect and make it like funny or some kind of crazy thing, and then it's like, oh, this is the product there at the end. Which a lot of companies like go viral like that and literally start you know million dollar months doing that type of shit. So I do get it. It, it, it all of it's cool to me. It's like I, I'm just amazed you can make one video and just make like a million bucks like that. <laughs> that blows my mind. That's crazy. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah, maybe you guys will rip the TikTok and we'll be back on here in a few months and you guys will be printing 30, 50 K months. I'm definitely doing it. I mean, like I see too, like the creator connections program, that's like kind of within Amazon and now everyone can be in it or whatever, but there's like, you do a lot of videos. So I think I'm in like, geez, like I've probably done at least close to 300 videos at this point. And basically you do the video and like you get like 10% commission up to the highest I've seen is like 50%. So like that's right off the top. So like if you buy this water bottle for a hundred dollars and it's 10%, I get $10. Like I don't think they factor in returns. Like, cause there's no return like slot. It just says like, whatever. I have like one product on there that I've made like in the last 30 days, like 500 bucks on. Dang. Well, I have a lot of other products that I haven't made any money on. And then yeah, one's bro. like $20, $30, two dollars like whatever um so i think that is a, like a huge opportunity to me and i was like wow like you get all this stuff for free so now i don't have to go to like airbnbs as much i haven't been to one in like two months the only downside i've noticed i don't know if you've noticed this too doing creator connections it's like the stuff isn't as popular so like someone's not necessarily looking for like i did a thing for a weather station like how many people yeah. actually want a weather station versus like a TV in your house, a dining room table. Like, I think that's going to be like the difference of it. So like, I think you're still going to need a mix, but it's definitely been interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Creator connections is a whole different beast on its own just alone. So yeah, it's been very nice too. Well, I want to wrap back around to something way off topic, but I remember seeing you on Twitter back in the early days when I was on there. And uh, I usually, I don't think I've got maybe three people on this pod the whole time that were like back on Twitter in the old, you were 2020 days, 2021, right? Yes. And well, yeah, Twitter, I think I barely started around, yeah, around that time frame when I actually started posting on there. Yeah. So I, I'm just curious how you saw kind of everything change from, like the Discord group. So what was your first group you joined? I'm sure it was like Products for Profit or something. Were you ever in that one? Uh, no. Uh, one of the first ones, I mean, because I started with dropship and like wholesale dropship. And so I joined uh, my boy Noah Mintz's group. So I was in his. But as far as like the RAOA, uh, first actual group I was in was Hustle Buddies by Nathan Jackson. Mm. Oh, yeah, I know what that one is too. Yeah. So, so how have you seen kind of everything change over these last like four or five years? Cause I feel like it's been so insane watching it all happen, but I'm curious your take on that type of thing. You mean like the community, Amazon itself or <laughs> everything, 
Yeah, everything. you can start anywhere you want. Whether it's like the, Oscar you know, definitely maybe. has something to say. His eyes like, yeah, I, I knew this he's like, I'm going to smash this. Oh, I'm going <laughs> to kill this answer. I'm throwing you a softball here, man. <laughs> no, I don't even know where to start with that, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy what could happen. I'm like, not even, because I've been doing this for five years and a lot's changed in like just three years or even two. So yeah, I mean, every, a lot's changed, right? So like groups and whatnot. Like the community itself, definitely a lot of FBA sellers these days for sure. I mean, and I just feel like everybody's just definitely making their own course, mentorship. Like I see guys making barely like 10K in a month. They're already talking about like one-on-one mentorships. And I'm just like, damn, bro. <laughs> you only, you've made $1,000 in profit and trying to charge people 3000 <laughs> That's cre- That's intense, man. But yeah, it, it's changed a lot, man. Uh, even right now, like on Twitter to the FBA community, since I started, I felt like it was more supportive back then, I guess you could say. Whereas, like, now it's more like you post anything and people are trying to come after you just for whatever reason. Doesn't even It could be you made a million in revenue or whatever and someone's just bashing at you for that reason alone. Like, it, it it's gotten worse on Twitter, if I'm being honest. Uh, Instagram, I feel like it's gotten much more quieter. I'm, I've definitely noticed less sellers on Instagram myself. Uh, and that's probably because people have quit, left the business. Uh, but yeah, that's just how I've seen it as far as the community itself. Obviously, Amazon itself has changed a lot with all the fees and regulations, Section 3s, and all that stuff going on right now, too. So yeah, it's been a lot, though, like a lot. Yeah, what do you think about, you know, with all these fee changes and like a section, like you just said, do you think that this stuff is random or do you think it has came a little bit in response to the massive growing community of sellers? Uh, the fees? Yeah, well, just everything. Like, Do you think uh, that Amazon recognized like, holy shit, we have like f- hundreds of thousands of people selling now and we had like 10K five years ago? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that plays a part. I mean, because there's just a lot of sellers out there, especially with like the Section 3 stuff. I think Amazon was finally getting pressure about certain products from customers, probably the government too. Yep. Uh, and so they probably realized like, if we don't start buckling down on our sellers, it's going to come back and bite us in the ass or whatever. So yeah, they're definitely tidying it up uh, as far as where you're getting your products from, if your suppliers are legit or not. Uh, you know, which for real sellers, that's a good thing because it's weeding out competition who's already, you know, not doing what they're supposed to do. But for those who are trying to, you know, take a, you know, trying to skip a step here and there by doing things they probably shouldn't, then, you know, it is what it is with them. Actually, yeah, yeah I think, so I'm doing this like TikTok shop. Like I've been, one of the tips was just watch a lot of content. So I've been watching like a lot of reels or whatever, or whatever they call it on TikTok. And um, one of the things that I noticed, because they serve me a lot of Amazon content. Like I'm usually, I usually just post a video on TikTok and then kind of leave. So I think one of the biggest drivers of section three is, and like stuff like that, I think it's just terrible information. Like I was watching some video the other day, this person's like telling people to one, like ship in the post office boxes via UPS and to use Lowe's boxes to do merchant fulfilled like orders. And it's just like, yeah, that's definitely going to get you like in trouble and suspended doing both of those things they're like oh yeah my ups guy doesn't care so i think they're probably like oh we'll send like ups usps boxes like to the amazon warehouse because the boxes are free and then it's just like yeah amazon's definitely gonna be looking into your account for sure yeah. that's illegal yeah i know and they're just like <laughs> oh ups doesn't care like and this person this video has like 13k views it's like <laughs> it, it, insane did that video start a beef because i know i saw yeah, something about it I thought yeah. I was talking about a beef the other day. I was like, what the hell? Yeah, that was the beef video. <laughs> yeah, that, UBSPS, uh, where it's a government entity, it's not like a company that's like ran by the government uh, or owned by the government or whatever. Yeah, those boxes they give are free for the people. Yeah, if you use that and you ship it with another supplier, it is literally illegal. I remember back, back in back in the old days, two people would say to do that or like wrap them up, wrap up the box in paper and then ship something in it. And it's like, dude, yeah, if you get caught doing that, I mean, that, it's a crime. And on the flip side of that, they're like, oh, well, like, I don't have to pay money for a box. It's like, how profitable could that be? If you're trying to, like, skimp on the box, like, it's probably <laughs> only profitable if you don't buy the box. Like, like 60 cents more. <laughs> yeah. So you're talking, like, a 150 profit. Or, like, it's just absolutely crazy. 
and it, it was just kind of like it was just crazy like they're buying like these big things and they're like doing a two and then like a four i'm like those are probably all like generic listings like it, it was just absolutely insane but i've there had 30 40 comments oh thanks so much this is so helpful like can't wait to look i was like damn like this is a lot of one of the biggest problems and it's like yeah. i've been selling for four or five years i've never even heard of this person and then i'm just like damn like million followers on tiktok and i'm just like holy wow. shit like man it, it, it's guys like that why i started posting too like because you see all like the wrong information misled stuff and it's like there's not too many people actually being honest about that type of stuff so but yeah that's insane man yeah, I feel like the the biggest thing with these days the plethora of information. Like, I, if I was a beginner, I think I think it might be like going on the other side of the curve where it's like it, more information's better. But when there's too much information, mm-hmm. you kind of just have no clue what to even do. And you can almost guarantee whatever opinion you see, there's like six other opinions that are conflicting yeah. with it. So I don't even know where somebody would get started. Like, I guess you just watch one guy and pray that he's not lying to you. <laughs> and I'm sure that's what most people do. It's like. I guess I'd recommend that. I don't even know. Them. Like, how, yeah. what would you, what do you think if you had to get started today? Like, what do you think your uh, your move would be, or what would you even do? How would you navigate it all? Wow, you know, you actually make a good point because you're right. You know, back then it felt like there was very little information compared to now. It's like, yeah, you you wouldn't even know who to even trust with. Like, if I was a new seller starting out, I would just probably hashtag Amazon FBA and I guess whoever shows me proof of boxes, shipments, orange bars. That's probably how you go come to the assumption that this person is doing what they're doing. But it's crazy. Even some of these gurus, they may have a warehouse, pallet, but even they're not running numbers like that, like they claim they are either. So it's honestly, you got to go with your gut these days, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Like you just got to go with your gut and pray that whoever's giving you information doesn't screw you over. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the uh, only way you, you'd want to do it, I think you'd want to, I'd probably go with the coach or person who talks the most shit about Amazon, like how shitty it is <laughs> or like what problems they have. Because I would almost assume like, why would they be saying that if they're trying to like push a program? That's a good point. Yeah, it's all like rainbows and sunshine for most people. But yeah, I will say one thing. Um, I joined a group this week. We'll, we'll have this group owner on the pod soon. And uh uh, I had not been in a Discord group since probably 2021, 2022. And those wow. groups used to be like, I'm sure you were in those type of things too. It's just, there was some monitors. There was like a general chat. Maybe you had some talk about whatever. Dude, I joined this group. There's like over 150 channels. The monitors are lightning fast. There's like 10 moderators in the channel, like constantly talking to people, directing people where to go. Like the overhead of these operations, like these these like discord groups and stuff, they used to just be, maybe you'd make an extra five, 10 K a month, 20 K. If you had a big group nowadays, I think these groups are making 400, 500 grand a month and have Holy like, God. they have, they have a company. Like this isn't just yeah. some dude running a group. This is like a big ass company. Holy crap. <laughs> I would, I would recommend to go on WAP and just join one of the top ones. Like and just take a free trial. You'd be amazed. Especially if you were in those groups back then, you'd be like, Whoa, hey, this is came a long, long way. Not surprised. I know a wholesale group I was in. I know the guy. He has to be making at least thirty k a month. Last I checked, so he's probably making even more than that off that group alone. So yep, if you, it's awesome. I mean, I guess if you if you can if you can take your face away from it too. I mean, you could sell that. You could sell your company for like a big ass multiple if you got it all dialed in like that. Yeah, that's freaking crazy, man. Off of uh, <laughs> you're not even doing nothing. <laughs> It might be my new grift. I'll just come back and I'll just start a group. <laughs> I mean, you definitely probably could at this point. I could. Yeah. I mean, after being in those, but I mean, it's a lot of work. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sure it's not easy. Like that, that's yeah. what all those group owners say too. They're like, you try to do it. Like I get it. They have big overhead. It's hard. And they're probably like four or five years in too. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. What other cues you got, John? What do you think the future is for kind of Amazon? Like, do you plan to like keep selling on Amazon for like the next, couple years are you trying to like kind of just get totally out of it and do aip or what are you trying to do if you're still listening to the podcast at this point you are into it and a fan and we really appreciate that if you could do us a solid and like subscribe and do all that stuff it really helps the podcast grow and secondly if you could tag us on instagram just take a picture of what part you are at the podcast if you like it tell us what you think about it Tag me at Side Hustle Experiment 
and I will definitely share it. Now let's get back to the podcast. Yeah, I mean, so we're still doing some right now too, just to like maintain the business a bit. But at the same time, it's not like we're looking for new suppliers, new ASINs no more. Like if we lose a nation here and there, then we honestly don't even worry about it at all. Like just do whatever you got to do, Amazon. <laughs> but don't even bother me with that anymore. So yeah, I mean, goal is to get AIP pretty scaled up. Uh, if I can get it to 10K a month, I might settle AIP like that, how it is. Uh, or continue scaling it. I mean, it's easy work, so yeah. why not? Uh, and then, you know, work on the UGC more, build up a following. Like, I already built a new Instagram account for it and everything, so I'm going to be building that up as well. Like, the whole Twitter, like, just all that, the social media platforms for that specific uh, model. And, yeah, I mean, if whatever reason we lose a lot of ASINs, I mean, I probably will just cut it off completely, honestly. Uh, because I just, like, when you manage something like AIP, UGC, it's just less head work to manage versus, like, with the FBA, you know, like, I don't have to be on seller snap repricing stuff every hour or once a day. I don't have to be checking inventory laps, see how much I made, or just, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess that the... (laughs) The good thing about that kind of stuff too, if like if you guys learn this skill of making the UGC and that type of thing, you can kind of go a lot of different ways with it. Where with yeah. Amazon, like if that does cut you off, like what do you do? Sell it on eBay? Like that's the best case scenario. And the and worst case is they just keep all your shit, I guess. I mean, best yeah. case though, you get it back. The other stuff, at least you're like you somewhat own the the stuff you you actually do own the stuff they send you, but you yeah. also own those videos. Like that's your IP. I mean, unless you. I don't know how that exactly works, but you know, it's your face. So that does help. Yeah. And you know, one thing too, that I, I know John was talking about like way earlier is like when it comes to this particular like stuff with UGC, uh, I feel like as guys, there's a lot of mm. potential for it. Like, because like John was saying earlier, it's a lot of stay at home moms, right? Who do these type of things. But if you're a guy who's willing to put yourself out there, like I'm on the Twitter UGC community on a whole different profile. There's probably like, not even 20 guys on that community that I see versus like all the women who pop up like all on the feed. So it's what do you say I, that I typed in UGC into TikTok last night to look for like followers. There was not one guy in like yeah. 50 profiles. I was just like swiping, swiping, swiping. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to have to like find like someone on Twitter and try to see if they're on TikTok and like see who the hell they're following. Yeah. Same thing with Instagram. If you type in UGC, you're not going to see no guy. Uh, creators pop up on there either. So, that's true. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah, yeah I only you, really know one. You think maybe that's why it, why that is though is the same with like OnlyFans? <laughs> you know what I mean? No. Like, it's like because because girls attract the most attention. That's what I would think. You know what I mean? It's like I don't know. Like if you if you see a video of like a pretty girl selling you something, usually most people are gonna buy that rather than like you know some dude. So I, I think that's what I, my thought is of like why that would be like that. But I guess there is a market for, it, especially if you're just like a relatable guy. It's like, dude, this is a great product or whatever. Like, yeah, I trust that guy. So yeah, maybe you are onto something there. I think there yeah. is that because like I think you look at someone like. Trying to think of a good example, but like if you're like a girl dad, like that's like a big thing right now. And then it's just like, well, you are one, and now like you're a Spanish girl dad, so like there's another avenue. And then like before you like only a dad like could do that video. Like I think obviously there's probably more opportunity to be like a mom, but on the flip side, like there has to be a lot of other products that are just like made for men. Yeah, like shaving stuff, you know, personal guy stuff, deodorant. Like, there's a lot of stuff out there that's, you know, in reach that if you're willing to put in that work, you'll find it. Yeah, that was going to be a question I asked earlier. So how do you get the stuff? Are you just li- – stuff that has got returned or are you, like, buying products with the intention of reviewing them? Uh, So receiving products is basically to create a connection like John. Another way is, like, they reach out to us on, like, Instagram, Facebook. I've even had a – uh, partnership with someone from the YouTube channel, which didn't even have that many subscribers at that time neither. So, yeah, I mean, they just uh, they reach out like, hey, we'll pay you 25 bucks or whatever they want to pay to review this product, keep it, upload it to the Amazon storefront. And so, and then from that, we make money from those commissions as well. And that's another thing too about this business model is that like, 
it starts out with one way of making money that can lead into like almost 10 different ways of making money from just like one yeah. video, one brand. So you post a video on Amazon, you make some commission from that. And then that can lead to a seller being like, oh, I like your style of video. Let me reach out to them. Let me pay you. You know, here's 30 bucks. Can you review this product? Post it on you know, the storefront. And then you're making commission off that video on top of getting paid from it. And then you can resell that product if you want as well through eBay, garage sale, whatever it may be. Uh, even, you know, make a clip for YouTube on the site as well. And then eventually hopefully get monetized, make money from that. And then even if, even if you do like the TikTok uh, part, you can do it through that. And then the UGC part as well, you can make a UGC video of that product. And so like that, th that's all from just one product that you can make money off of just like that consistently if you're willing to put in that work, which is pretty insane. Should have plugged a course at the end of that. That was a good trouble. <laughs> yeah. That, that's that would have been the perfect <laughs> affiliate there. It is funny though too, because like it is still like, in its heyday and it, it's funny like uh, oscar was telling about this one guy and i was like dude like he was big like look at the screenshot like date so like there are already people lying about like how much they're making doing like this stuff and the only and the crazy part is is like you can't really share your numbers because oh. amazon will kick you off they see any that's why i don't share my online numbers anymore because if they see anything with the Amazon logo on it, they they could flag your influencer account, and then you shut they shut it down. Yeah, actually, even on my after my first month of starting the program, I actually got my account shut down uh, because they went into my Instagram link, like they actually clicked in the link in my bio, and they saw my Discord group that had the Amazon logo on there, and because Damn. of that, they took my account down. So I had to reapply and just restart the whole process again so yeah they're they're very strict with it why uh, do, you, do you guys know why that copyright problems i'm guessing i don't know they just don't like you posting their logo like I, you can say amazon in any of your stuff but you just can't have the logo for whatever reason hmm. oh so what if you cropped your screenshots to where it wasn't the logo do you know if that would be a problem mm, i haven't tried i'm not even Trying it's not to worth it trying for me. <laughs> so, but yeah. yeah, I'm not trying to mess around with this opportunity and like get suspended. So like, I get like 80 likes on Instagram saying that I did a good job this time. True. Well, you got any other? What? What? You got any topics for us? You watched the pod, so you know, is anything came up that you're like, man, I wish I could interject right there. Oh man, yeah. I mean, the last one I saw was uh, who was it with? I think it was with the uh, Sam, I believe. I think that's her name. Uh, we didn't have her. No, no, no not Sam. No, it was uh, I think who was the guy? I forgot which one it was. I don't even remember the last oh. one. I think it was. Was it Cody? I think it was Cody. Cody. Yeah, yeah, Cody probably be that. Been that one. Yeah, that one was pretty good right there too. But there was another one I did really like the most. I think I even told John about it too. But yeah, it was a while back. Do you remember oh, that, John? What do you think about the talk about Cody? What do you do you have any plans to maybe branch off to Walmart? Uh, I did open a Walmart account like last year. Uh, I was planning on starting it, but that was right about actually I opened it because I had that issue with that ASIN actually. Mm. Uh, because once I saw that, that that ASIN got taken down for us, I was like, crap, I need to sell it somewhere else or because I, I don't i'm not gonna sh i'm not sure what's gonna happen with this particular asin with the money i have tied up on this so yeah i created the account but i just haven't messed with it honestly but if i ever did any e-commerce stuff i would probably put my focus on walmart instead of amazon uh moving forward uh, i do think walmart has a lot of potential i know as far as like profits growing and i think if you can get into it right now that's a much better option than amazon Interesting. Yeah, we, me and John started accounts <laughs> after the Cody podcast because we were like, we were FOMOing so hard. <laughs> and yeah. I, sourced, I sourced during the night that night and I had found like five profitable products as I thought they were profitable. And I was storefront stalking people. And then it was the same as Amazon. So if you storefront stalk like straight from the browser, you know, you click it and it'll show their product on right. the actual listing instead of what actually has the buy box. So I had found all these things. And I was like, dude, I'm going to make so much money. 
And then I'll look and I notice, oh, wait a second, Walmart's on this one. There's like 58 people on this one under here. And it just never showed that for me. So I gave it up too quick. I probably probably could try to source and do something with it, but it's so hard where you don't have Keepa and you don't have like any data really. Like I, I didn't even know where to start. Like I guess just click one listing that I might think is profitable. I did Nike, I think. Just go to Nike because I know they don't sell on there and go from there, but it was a little difficult. Yeah. Good. Yeah, from what I heard, Walmart is just – pick and choose you list something and hope it sells if it does double down if it doesn't then don't do it again i guess that's what i've heard at least yeah but i guess that is good though a little bit like the the less data the less information the more advantage you can have it's like with amazon sure. everybody's got this so many tools and now, now with the ai stuff so I'm, actually i don't think i've told you about this john I, I talked to a guy that i mentored last year and uh he was sourced, or maybe I didn't tell you. He sources like three or four hours a week now with an AI tool that he found on Twitter and said that he finds like all these products. Just the guy sends him a search, I don't know, once or twice a week. He buys yeah. his products and he's done. Sends it to a prep center, like basically automated this part of the business where he doesn't ever what manual. The hell? He has, has a manual source like six months. He, he did a coaching call with me and he like showed me the whole thing. It's legit. Like it's pretty. <laughs> yeah it's pretty crazy i was, what the hell? I haven't signed up for it like i thought about it but yeah you literally it's like complicated i don't even know what it was called but like basically yeah you like work with this guy and then he has like servers and like you're like i don't know nike's having a 30 percent off sale and he gives him like a link and then it just like runs and then it populates into a spreadsheet. I don't, it seemed like kind of complicated, but I don't know. It's really working for him. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're not putting any work, I mean, <laughs> shit, I'll make it work too. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, it's cool. I always thought the AI stuff, like, because I use it all the time now. Like, I just see the power of it. Whenever somebody in this space really gets into that stuff, it's going to really kill a lot of stuff. Because if there's Perfect. companies that... But, you know, with Amazon, there's not always the right UPC and that type of shit. But, you know, most part, if you could scan a website every single day and not miss anything, yeah, you're probably in pretty good shape at that point. Yeah, like big time. Yeah, yeah that's even, really going to disrupt even, it. Even AI helps me with, like, the UGC stuff already, too, like all that. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's pretty nice. Yeah, well, what, what do you use? What kind of – do you have any favorite AI type things? Uh, No, just regular chat, GPT type of stuff. Just, you know. Give me some ideas, scripts of what to say on certain products, mix it with my own words, and <laughs> I'm done within like less than ten minutes. <laughs> so, well, if you guys, uh, if you guys ever have to caption videos, there's an app called Sub Magic, or it's not an app, it's a website, and that one's really, really good. That's how I used to edit these podcast clips when I was putting those out. It's called SubMagic.co. You pay like. I don't know, like 20 bucks a month, 40 bucks a month. And then you upload your video and it's got so much more advanced than when I did it. You can add B-roll wherever you want. You can add any kind of captions for Mosey style, Mr. B style. They like literally have the names of them there. And then edit them the way you want, add sound effects, uh, in, out, like different animations. Wow. It makes wow. editing pretty damn easy. And then you can even put long form in there. It'll generate you short form clips, which I know there's lots of companies that do that. And, you know, from yeah. our experience, John, it's not very good, but, you know, <laughs> Whenever a company can figure that out, that'll be good as well. Yeah, yeah, there'd be so many people pitching about like short form stuff. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I got like five DMs a day. Yeah, with yeah, that we just we just had a <laughs> pub with Jonah yesterday. It's awesome when when that comes out, people are gonna love yeah. that one, I think. But he was talking about how he uh, he's he said that he'll get these DMs. Like I'm sure you get these too of these like crazy. You think they're spam? So he's like just answers some of those DMs and like takes them up on the offer. Like just for, I don't know why he does that, but he said he did it last year or the year before and did Walmart drop shipping. Like somebody ran a Walmart drop shipping and he made $5,000 his last month before it got shut down. He was making like a bunch of money. And then he just said, too, he found a VA that said they were a brand. You remember what it was called? What are they? A brand broker? Service. Maybe? Brand servicer broker yeah it was wow. something like that so that the va found them on like they just were in their dms just random i get probably a foreign name too like if somebody from the philippines or whatever came to him said this brought him three brands and he got on calls with these brand owners like they were completely legit had revenue on amazon and everything and maybe think maybe, maybe we should hit these people up in the dm <laughs> oh shit <laughs> Oh, that's sad. the first person i've ever even heard do that because i just most people just ignore that shit like from what i've experienced yeah i just delete them 
like right away when I see those, I'm just like, eh, I'm not gonna bother with that. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. That's well, John, you got any more good cues? I'm trying to think. Um, where I guess like where do you kind of see? Well, I guess we already talked about that. Where do you see the business going? But I don't know. Do you have anything? Yeah. We're running out. <laughs> no, I mean, um, I guess to anybody who's still watching this, is like, you know, I'm gonna be honest. Be open to your options in 2024. Like, don't uh limit yourself just to FBA if I'm being honest with people watching this like there's money to be made that's probably much quicker a little bit easier than other things out there right now so just my personal thoughts people like the honesty I think it's funny we yeah. I mean, like Amazon guys but you know it, to me it's just so hard to especially where I don't sell anymore I mean, I'm definitely not going to sit here and like lie about it but I don't know. It's from everything I've saw, and I know, I know so many big sellers behind the scenes too, like really yeah. big guys. They either have to shut their shit down or just like aren't doing well anymore. And to me, I don't know. It just seems so disingenuous. So there's probably somebody here that's making like 4K and like beating themselves over the head for doing like four thousand dollars a month. And it's like, dude, do you like, get off the internet? Don't worry <laughs> about all these people telling you you suck and it's easy. It's not easy. It's like you don't suck. It's just it's way harder than you think right now, and that's just like part of it. Yeah. Like way harder. And yeah, yeah, I just think that go ahead. No, you're good. You're good. You can go. I was gonna say, yeah, I think that's kinda like the trend that it's like this whole like you just like you just have to like try harder or I mean, yeah, it's just harder to source. Like I saw someone on Instagram the other day and they're just like, Yeah, you know, I had a hundred grand tied up in Nike. And oh, crap. you know, I don't know, I guess they got hit with the ungate or whatever the hell happened. And they're just like, yeah, like, you just got to push through it. Like, time to, like, go even bigger. I'm like, you're freaking nuts. <laughs> you got 100K worth of inventory. And you're like, yeah, time to scale this to the moon. I'm just like, yeah. I mean, that yeah. would not be my takeaway from the situation. But, I mean, yeah. I guess whatever you got to do. But, yeah, I think that is, like, one of the big things, too, that you just got to – open your eyes a little bit i mean amazon i mean they're still like it still has time and like you could still make money on it like i'm gonna have a good q4 this q4 but i mean other than that i mean it's definitely getting harder and i do think it's disingenuous i think you have seen the messaging change a little bit too where it's like oh like this is hard work like this is a like it's just a little bit more of that but for the most part it's just like I also think that's a bad message too. Like if I could do it, you could do it because like, that's not always true. Like everyone's situation is different. I've come to learn that too with like AIP or something like that. Like someone crushes it and it turns out like, Oh, well they own like 10 Airbnbs. So like they just like, you know, or they like furnish Airbnbs. So like, that's a huge advantage. And you're like, Oh, like that's how they were able to get like, you know, 1500 videos up in like two months. It's like, well, they own all them or like they have big family or, you know, they have a lot of kids. So they have like a lot of toys. So it's just very situational. And I think you just got to like, really, I think I really like what you said at the beginning, like you reflect on the year and you're just like, Hey, like, how is this going? Like, how does this feel? Like, are there better opportunities? And I think sometimes it's like not to grow bigger. It's like, is there a better opportunity? And I think, a lot i mean you got called out for it like by the troll or whatever he's just like oh like he's basically like oh oscar like he can't handle it so like oh, yeah. he's doing it he's doing amazon influencer and like no dude like there's just a better opportunity i'm chasing right now yeah and that's the thing too right it's like it's not that i can't handle it i'm choosing not to want to handle something like that either like like expand your mind a little bit man like why would i put 60 hours a week of work to barely make 10k a month or whatever when i could do something else put it in like 20 hours and make that same amount maybe a little less but with like 20 percent of the work you know like this is <laughs> no they have, they have stockholm like... it's stockholm syndrome 
You know, the thing when they, you get kidnapped and then you love your kidnapper eventually, that's literally what's happening with people. I, I love how you said expand your mind. Like I, I, that was my biggest thing when I decided to quit and make it super public. And there were people being like, well, he just isn't good anymore. It's like, dude, I'm better than you for sure. It's just, I don't want to do it because I don't see myself making millions of dollars. I'm young. I don't want to have to quit when I'm 40. You know, I'd rather quit now and have the money and just do it that way. It's like, you got to like look farther. And if that's not what you want, if you want to work 60 hours a week and make that, then fine. But yeah. like, you, I like, you know, if you can do, you know, make 80% of the money and work 20% of the time, like, what are you doing this for anyways? Unless you just fucking love selling stuff on it. <laughs> Which, <laughs> yeah. Show me that guy. Okay. Show me that guy. Maybe Amazon yeah. lit, but aside from him, I, yeah. I can't think of no one. Exactly, man. Yeah. I, th I think the big thing, yeah, expand your mind. Like there's, other stuff like don't get stockholm to amazon and the amazon gurus like they're, they're not gonna save you i promise like uh like i i'm gonna make a lot of content which i know i'm gonna get hate for but i'm gonna say right now too is like if i'm being honest i'm not even suggesting anyone starting amazon fba anymore moving forward like that's probably a terrible business model for you to start <laughs> compared to other things yeah i don't disagree I don't yeah. disagree. I, I think it's hard to say that and stuff like, and I don't want to like discourage people that are already in it. Right. Like I hate to do that. Cause yeah. it's like, man, if you, if you, if this is your dream and you are having some success, don't just quit. Cause that, like other people are quitting. It's just like everybody quits for different reasons. It's not yeah. <laughs> funny because you, know, you can't handle it. Usually that's not the, if you can't handle Amazon FBA, then you're, you ain't cut out for anything. That's definitely not what it is. Like you said, it's like, there's just other stuff. I think it's funny people come from that perspective. Well, guess he gave up. <laughs> not yeah, really, man. man. Like that's <laughs> not that's not how it is, dude. Yeah, exactly. Like it's just yeah. I mean, because I mean, like even the influencer UGC stuff. That's not for everybody. Like uh, yeah. I've talked to people personally, and they're like, "Yeah, that's not for me. I don't want to be putting myself out there making videos." And like that's understandable. Like not everybody wants to be on camera talking about you know some random ass product or whatever. So yeah, it makes sense if you're more like that's for you, then that works. But like for everyone else, it's like give it a chance. You know, you never know. You know, you might find out that this thing is more. You know, it frees up your time more. It might. You don't even mm -hmm. gotta go into debt doing this. Like, uh, like I've had DMs where people are asking me, like, dude, I've been you know ran on my credit cards pretty high. There's something I can do about it. Like someone even asked me, like I'm pretty bad in debt can the AIP program get me out of it within like two months or so? And I'm just like, no, like even if you make 10,000 right off from the get go, you're not going to see that, that 10 K until like two, two months, months from now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's just, yeah. I mean, you got to do what you think goes like works for you though. Yeah. The debt stuff is killer, man. I've got some DMS like that too. Those are like the most disheartening things ever. Cause like debt is what like kills most Americans like financially forever. And when you're like yeah. some kid, like, I don't remember, I will never forget this. I was sitting by the pool taking like a free coaching call that I did with a kid. And he was saying that he was in like $19,000 worth of debt or something. And I, he was, he was like 19 years old. He's got a thousand dollars every year. He's lived in debt. I'm like, bro, you gotta, like, you've got to work on getting this down. And he's like, I think if I just keep buying inventory, I keep doing this, it'll work. I'm like, no man, get a job like ASAP, try to pay that debt off. Cause that, that grows. Like it literally gains interest. You don't just sit there with it and you pay 19 grand a few years. No, it goes up a lot. Yeah. That kills me when I see that stuff. Cause I've just never been a yeah. big guy on debt anyways. So when yeah. you see people get crippled, oh my gosh. Yeah. It, it, that pisses me off. Cause I know they probably get that misinformation from someone else who supposedly grew scale using credit cards. It's just like, damn man, like I'm just, I feel bad for you that you follow that person's advice. Like I never tell anybody go get credit cards. Like hell no. <laughs> like if you can avoid right. them for the longest, don't even get them. Yeah, that's a great advice too. It's like get get a credit card that is like three grand or whatever that you can you can buy stuff with and pay it off so you can get the rewards. But like you don't need Namex Plum, you don't need all that stuff to to run this thing. Like you shouldn't be that concerned with doing it. Little yeah. do I ever even see people that that works out for long term ever. Yeah, like aside from like maybe a one percent or so, but yeah, long term, yep. yeah, and that's and that that's also why I'm downscaling. It's like I don't want to put myself in that position either to ever be in that position. Like, no, I'm not about to add on fifty thousand more on debt just to grow more revenue numbers or whatever. Like, nah, nope. Yeah, and I think I'm... that's like the big thing too, because it's like most companies grow revenue so they could be bought for like a higher price, but like since you're not being bought, like. 
it just it just doesn't make sense and like i totally agree with you on the scaling part too with like credit and stuff like that i was never one to be like yeah just get like a zero percent apr card and like go to the moon and stuff like that and it's just like actually i don't know if you know jameson felipe but he actually did a call in our school group the other day and that's exactly what he did he got a zero percent apr card in um I think he got Spark gave him like 150 grand right off the bat. He spent all of it in Q4 like two years ago. And they did Amazon to Amazon flips in this group. And they all analyzed the products and all this other shit. And then Amazon came in on every fucking one and they all got destroyed. And then he had to like do RA and road trip for like six months just to like put a dent in it. Like he got out of it, but it was just like that whole like uh, scale mentality. And I think a lot of people don't scale even for the right reason. Like ask yourself, like, why are you trying to scale? Is it like, is it cause like you're want to be like the next Amazon lit or something? Like that's just not a good reason to scale. I feel like a lot of people scale cause they, I feel they get FOMO well they're doing it so like i need to do it and then you make some pretty bad decisions yeah you're right about the amazon lip part i remember when i started i wanted to be like him and watch me amazon but looking at it now i'm like hell no i don't want to deal with that (laughs) i was the same way like i saw like some big like booksellers they had warehouses and i was like oh man that that'd be crazy like have a forklift and all this other stuff and i got all that stuff i'm like this is not the dream like this is not what i want to be doing like you know, it looked good on Instagram and everything, but like now that I have to run the warehouse and do all this stuff and the overhead, you just don't think about some of this stuff. And I think that's probably one of the biggest myths on Amazon about scaling and stuff like that. People don't realize you want to do a hundred grand, you need to spend about 50 (laughs) or leverage 50. And like a lot of people think they're just going to take their five grand and turn that into a six figure month. And it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Say it true. All right. You want to close this out, John? Yeah, let's do it's it. Been a good, good hour. Hell yeah. Thanks for being here, man. Um, where can people find you? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's on Instagram for now. Just Oscar Martinez underscore 817. Sweet. Well, Sweet, dude. thanks so much. Uh, we got, we'll see you guys on the next episode, and peace out. Peace. Peace, everybody.